This is Princess Steps Fall 2021, week two. And the topic this week is shoes. So before I start, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, next week, the topic is using heart rate as your exercise guideline. So I encourage everyone to be practicing taking your heart rate throughout this week to help prepare you for next week, okay? And everybody hope and pray that the weather is cooler <laughs> next week because it's really hot. So because it's hot, I'm really happy to see a lot of you brought your water bottles. Um, and some of you got the Princess Steps hats, that's cool. Also remember that when it is this hot, that will truly increase your heart rate. And so, in addition to having a purposeful warm up, you're all encouraged to be patient and be realistic about, about your effort out there, okay? Uh, and the final announcement I have is for the leaders, we were gonna take a picture at the beginning, but everybody's not here. So we're gonna take a picture after you come back. So when you finish your uh, walk or run tonight, please wait in the parking lot until every all the leaders are here and we'll do the picture then, okay? We'll all be nice and glowy and shiny from sweat. <laughs> okay, now, uh, John, come on up. No, I don't have any, does anybody else have, did I miss one? Yeah, we're gonna do, a, we're gonna talk about shoes and our guest speaker is John Gallagher, and so you're on. Okay. Welcome to week two. Welcome to Gallagher's. Um, for the last almost 24 years, we make a living selling shoes. Okay. And doing the women's clinic and, you know, welcoming everybody into the whole walking and running community. Um, shoes have changed. Quite a bit, a whole lot in the last 24 years. Uh, materials are different, how they're built is different, where they're built is different. Um, the weight has changed dramatically. And just to, even within the last three or four years, an awful lot of things about this industry and about shoes have changed. However, we have one simple thing that we're trying to do. Protect these, okay? That's your foot. Within your foot, there are 33 different joints, over 100 moving parts, okay? There's, there's 26 different bones, over 100 different joints, okay? And they all have to move, okay? When they move, even when you're just walking, every step you take, you place your foot down onto the ground, the impact of your foot hitting the ground walking is about one and a half to two times your body weight in force on each foot, okay? When you're running, it's three to four times your body weight in force coming down, okay? If you were to just walk one step or run one step, that wouldn't be that much of an impact. You could wear anything you wanted to. But think about it that within every mile that you walk, you're probably taking about 1,500 to 1,800 steps. And runners, you're probably taking about 1,200 to 1,400 steps. Okay? That's pound, 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 pound. Take your hand and slap it on a table 1,400 times. Okay? What's your hand going to look like? be all kind of red, swollen, not happy, right? You do that every time you put a mile in your shoes. So if you want to go two miles, three miles, five miles, or, you know, so a lot of the leaders have done half marathons and marathons, tens and tens of thousands of steps. We got to protect these things, okay? So that's the main concept on any shoe any shoe design, any new technology that's come out for the last 40 years, okay? Um, personally, I 
sold my first pair of running shoes in a running shoe store in the summer of 1984. Okay, so I've been around this stuff a long, long, long time. The shoes in the mid 80s were pretty boring. You really couldn't tell one brand from the next because a lot of brands really didn't get into the, the whole logoing and you know, it was just, things looked pretty much the same. Um, even the swooshes were really small, <laughs> okay? But there was some kind of, you know, some identifiable logos which each one of the, each one of the companies. Now, the companies are, you know, the logos are big, they want you to know whose shoe you're wearing, they want everybody to say, oh, those are really cool shoes. Where did you get them? Okay. We like when they say Gallagher's. But um, the whole thing is branding, branding, branding. Okay. But the simple thing, like I said, is we're still trying to protect the human foot. Okay. Um, also within the foot, interesting to know. Throw some facts at you here in the beginning. Um, we also want to protect it especially on very warm nights like tonight, because your foot has over a quarter million sweat glands in it, 250,000, okay? The average temperature within inside a shoe when you're running and walking, the foot is about 114 degrees, okay, inside your shoe. So you don't want to wear any kind of old sock. You want to wear, you know, stuff like we sell here that wicks away the moisture, doesn't absorb the, the sweat, so that you're not sitting in a puddle of water in a big old floppy cotton sock, okay? So you want some breathable socks. Just to show you, within 20 minutes of exercise, That's how much sweat comes out of one foot, okay? <laughs> when it's warm in the 90s like it is today, you could probably add a little bit more, okay? Because everything's, you know, we're sweating, everything's running down to your foot, plus all those sweat glands that are in your foot, there's an awful lot of moisture taking place in, down at the bottom of your, your legs there. So with that in mind, all that sweat, all that moisture, good socks, okay? Also the shoes. Years ago, shoes made out of leather. Um, back in the, the late 70s, early 80s, kangaroo leather was, you know, the new ultimate thing in, in shoe design. Super hot stuff, <laughs> okay? Now we've got all these engineered meshes where there's holes and places that allow moisture that also support the foot. Um, what's really changed in the last five years is an awful lot of the stitching and what we call overlays, how a shoe was constructed, put together, that, that's changed dramatically. Now, the whole upper basically goes through a sewing machine and everything is just made in one piece instead of this glued to that, sewn to this, and then glued onto a midsole, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna pass some shoes around, but um, two things, like I said, that's really, really been driving shoe design in the shoe industry in the last four or five years is lightness, lightness, lightness. Everybody wants a shoe that doesn't weigh anything, okay? But also provides all the protection. Because remember where they started off with, figure, let's just say 1,200 to 1,500 steps per mile, per foot, okay? You gotta protect those feet. Because, you know, the old song about the ankle bones connected to the shin bone, shin bones connected to the knee bone, knee bones connected, okay. All the way up, what we're trying to disperse is that shock that takes place when your foot hits the ground, okay? Susan talks about princess steps all the time. We got t-shirts that say it, we got hats that say it now, okay? The whole concept of princess steps, also through good form, you can eliminate a lot of that shock and not 
drive it all the way up your foot or all the way up your leg from your foot. Okay. So when shoes are designed, let's grab, uh, just grab this here. Hey, this broke. A lot of cushion in the heel. Okay. And the concept of rolling from heel to toe is pretty much how, how we're designed. Everybody, when you land, you land towards the outside of your heel and then your foot rolls up to your toes and you push off your, your first metatarsal, your big toe, okay? So within that motion of hitting the heel on the ground first, rolling up through and then pushing off into the next step, that's where those 33 joints in your foot, okay? All that articulation takes place. The ligaments, the tendons, the muscles, all kind of working to make sure that you can go from step to step, okay? If a shoe isn't supporting you, isn't providing what you need cushion-wise, you could hit and just, if it's too soft, it's just gonna collapse to the outside. And then you gotta kind of fight the shoe to get to the inside off that big toe, all right? If it's too firm, you're gonna stay more to the outside. If it's too soft, there'll be a whole lot of collapsing across the arch, all right? So the day-to-day, -day, you know, what we do here every single day, what all of our employees over those 24 years have been taught is to actually watch you walk, watch you, if you're gonna run in the shoes, watch you run in the shoes. And what we're looking at from behind is kind of this line, the back of your heel. And after your foot hits the ground, what takes place side to side, okay? Is there a lot of motion this way? Or do you hit the heel and just kind of roll straight through your, um, your, your, got, your gait, your stride pattern? If that's really neutral, you can have a little bit of wear on the outside of that heel and then straight up through the middle of the, the forefoot, okay? If there's a lot of excessive wear to the Jesus one. So if there's a lot of excessive wear over here on this side, that indicates to us that you're rolling across the shoe and that you're putting an awful lot of awful lot of stress and strain on the actual muscles that create your arch. Okay? And that side to side motion, not only is your foot moving, your knees rotating one direction, your hips will rotate the opposite direction. Okay, so it's just that the physical way that we absorb shock in our bodies. So if we can take your foot and have it land and go through the cycle without a lot of side to side motion or a lot of too much shock, it's not traveling up your body, okay? How many people have had, I think Susan asked this question last week, Chin splints, okay? Knee pain, ankle pain, hip pain, low back pain. A lot of things, I mean, shoes can't take away all those pains, but it can help eliminate an awful lot of things, okay? Um, two brands that have kind of changed a lot of things in the last, oh, five to eight years, uh, Ultra. Okay, which Ultra is helping us out with the women's clinic leaders. They're actually providing shoes for the leaders. So thank you, Ultra. Um, Ultra's concept is their shoes should be shaped like the foot. Okay, so I got the foot. It's a little narrow in the heel, right? Wider right here at the metatarsals where your toe bones are. So they've designed shoes that Kind of mimic the shape of the foot okay so a little bit wider in the forefoot just like our natural feet are okay and for many years shoe companies have designed shoes where the heel is a little bit higher in the back so that it's absorbing that shock when you hit the ground and then a little bit lower in the forefoot okay ultra said no we're going to change that we're gonna just do level cushioning or zero drop, 
So from the heel to the forefoot, it's completely flat. Okay. And that concept first came out now 10 years ago. Uh, Ultra's celebrating their 10th anniversary this year. A lot of people are like, oh, come on, that doesn't work. It's, it's not enough cushion. It's not going to work. But their concept was it takes you back to actual natural running. Okay. Like we're running barefoot in the grass, in the sand. Okay. I'll say, I'll, I'll jump back for a second. Um, 10 years ago, eight, nine, 10 years ago, remember the whole barefoot craze? Okay. My estimates are we probably lost 20% of all people who wanted to run because of the barefoot experiments. Um, if we were all still, you know, run around with no air conditioning, um, kind of in the natural state of how we were created many, many years ago, that would make sense. But now we have concrete and asphalt and a lot of very, very hard man-made things that our bodies need cushion, they need support, okay? Feet just don't absorb shock just because you can think it through, okay? And the whole concept of your feet will get stronger if you run barefoot the happiest people on earth were podiatrists and physical therapists, not the runners who were trying to do that. Okay, so that that fad kind of led from let's go barefoot to ultra doing the concept of level cushioning to hoka. Okay, this isn't barefoot. All right, I'm gonna pass this around. How many people have? not held a hoka shoe in their hand or steam it, okay? This thing looks like a big old chunky thing, right? It is super, super lightweight because the foams now have changed so much and you can get tons of cushioning and tons of absorption within a foam, but it doesn't weigh anything, okay? So I'm gonna pass this around and you can just see how lightweight things can be even though it looks like there's tons and tons of cushion. Okay. Another thing that Hoke has done that's, again, very different than your traditional shoes that have been made for decades, it's a rocker. So there isn't the heel, toe. It uh, doesn't bend up here at the toe like, like this New Balance shoe does. Okay. It just rolls you from the heel to the toe without a whole lot of movement up in the forefoot. Why would that work? Well, if you've got arthritic joints, if your toes are kind of breaking down or things like bunions or, um, you know, deformities, natural deformities of the foot that take place over years, a brand like Hoka has really come in and come, come up with a concept that rocking the foot from the heel of the toe in the toe off takes off an awful lot of stress off the foot, okay? So the coolest thing I think for us, and it always has been with the store, we really do work very closely with all the podiatrists in town, all the physical therapy clinics in town, and there's always a lot of conversation going on about really the science behind what's going on with the shoe and what we're trying to provide for our customers, for their patients, People who are trying to get back into a walking or running routine and coming back from injuries or coming back from, from aches and pains, proper footwear can really do an awful lot to change, you know, the conditions that created those injuries. Okay, um, holding up New Balance right now. Um, for years, what we used to look at when we were walking, having you walk, run, is how much pronation or how much rolling in your foot did from that heel to toe, from heel landing to toe off. Um, so shoes, I'd say even within the last few years, we had categories of neutral shoes, stability shoes, and motion control shoes. A lot of that has kind of gotten blurred in the last five or six years where shoes used to have a big plug here 
to provide support so that you wouldn't collapse and fall into the inside as you're going through your gate, okay? Where a lot of the foams and a lot of the materials, instead of having to put thermoplastic pieces into the shoe, into the midsole to provide support, they can now blend the actual midsole material, put it in the, um, in the, the forms where, where they create the actual midsole as part of the cushioning material, where part of it is softer, part of it is firmer. Part of it provides more support, but it all looks the same, okay? So it's this, this way of heating up um, the materials or sandwiching materials, like in this Mizuno, okay, can everybody see the, oh, there's something kind of on that bottom, that yellow there, okay? And then there's sandwiched two different materials right here. So by using different kinds of foams at different densities, it provides both cushioning, support, and guidance from heel to toe through the cushion. Y'all feel like shoe scientists now? <laughs> there's a lot that, go, what I'm trying to get across is there's an awful lot that goes into this, okay? Um, we, you know, Susan, for the most part in the last three or four years has done the training exclusively and a, a brand new um, employee for us literally is going through anywhere from four to nine weeks of pretty intensive training with her. <laughs> okay? Well, we talk an awful lot about the foot and knees and hips and shoulder and, and chins and how all that works, how biomechanically our bodies work and support our, you know, our gates as we go through walking and running. And then the shoes. And guess what? The shoes change constantly. Um, shoes that worked great two years ago don't even exist because they're always updating. They're always changing. There's there's really so many things to take into account. And I can say, honestly, all of the employees we've had are they're, they're bright young men and women who have just really gotten into what this is all about and taking care of our customers, taking care of, you know, putting well, our, our saying, like it says on the Gallagher bench, you know, bringing Willamette Valley to its feet and keeping it on its feet. Making sure that those good that good footwear, properly fitted, properly sold to you guys, is really going to keep, you know, add a lot of longevity to your walking and running careers. Okay. Um, the other thing we say all the time is left, right, repeat. It's a whole lot easier when your shoes fit well, feel good, and they're supporting you and giving you good cushion. Um, Couple. I'm going to throw this one around too. Pass this one around this way. Um, Mizuno, or I'm sorry, New Balance is also playing around with brand new materials. Um, and you're going to, something that we're going to see over the next year and a half. Um, any shoes that you see on the wall, I bought six or eight months ago. <laughs> um, so I'm constantly being taught and sold what's coming next, what's coming next. This shoe from New Balance and some shoes that are gonna come out both from uh, Brooks and, um, well, Brooks, Saucony, New Balance, and um, Ultra are all gonna have nitrogen infused foam. <laughs> so that things are gonna change all over again. We'll pass that one around. And you can see how so, so soft this shoe is. Okay, kind of like the UFO soles, if anybody's put these on your foot. These are recovery sandals. Okay, I'll start this one back around this way. Got a formed arch in it. Um, there's all kinds of different shoes that UFOS is now making with this midsole. So the whole concept is that after a walk, after a run, your foot is sitting in a very soft bed with an arch in there that's keeping your foot relaxed so that it's done working, it can start recovering, okay? So there's, there's an awful lot of stuff that's constantly taking place 
in the industry and everybody's trying to one up one another. Um, trail shoes, another concept, okay, for hiking, running in trails, roots, rocks, jumping over stuff. Really aggressive. <laughs> really aggressive. You know, some people are like, no, no, that's not for me. Um, really aggressive outsoles, okay. Um, these are really firm. Um, you wouldn't want to, you know, drive your car with big studded tires, you know, on summer dry roads. You want those for the gravel roads, you want those off road, okay. Same kind of thing with trail shoes. These aggressive lugs that are on the bottom do a great job of gripping in the dirt, gripping in the mud, doing okay on gravel and stone and rock, but it's gonna feel like, you know, your teeth are chattering when you're running down the sidewalk in them. And they won't wear out really fast because this stuff is really soft rubber that is designed to protect you on those trails. Okay. Um, Are those for running on trails mm -hmm. or walking or Both. hiking? Both. All of it. Well, actually, all of the above. Okay. <laughs> walking, running, hiking. Um, this particular shoe, um, the last two years, we haven't had a whole lot of hikes, th the, the through hikers mm -hmm. going through the whole Pacific Crest Trail because of the because right. of COVID and because of the, the fire, the forest fires. But three years ago, this shoe, the Lone Peak, from Ultra was actually the number one through hiker shoe because they, they do all these studies and you know who's wearing what. And so that was actually the shoe that most people wore on the trail. Today I had a customer come in with a size seven and she left with a size eight and a half. You wanna talk a little bit about fit? Oh, okay. And um, then we can maybe have time for one question and then we'll have to get going. Okay, so the proper fit of a shoe because that what I was saying, the motion and the, the pounding that takes place, you want to have space for your these toes, these joints to spread out and do what they're supposed to do, all those joints, okay? So, you know, really fashionable shoes, you want to have your toes really up snug, not running shoes, okay? We want to have about a thumb width between the end of your longest toe, sometimes it's your second toe, first or second toe, between the end of the shoe and the end of your toe, okay? That way, as your foot, your foot hits the ground, it can spread out, okay? It can absorb the shock because that's the first place that shock gets absorbed naturally with one of these, okay? And then the shoe helps this, so. Um, so we always want to have that thumb width between the end of your longest toe and the end of the shoe. If somebody wears a fashionable shoe in a size seven that just fits so snug and it's like a glove, that's great for walking around in at the office. But if you're gonna be walking four, five, six miles in it or running in it, you're gonna end up with black toenails and beat up toes, okay? So we wanna have that extra space in the shoe. Yeah. We have time for one quick question. Okay. Oh. Thank you so much for um, reviewing all of this for us. I do have a quick question about um, the pair. Do you recommend like how many miles on a pair of shoes before you um, have to replace them? Is it still 400 miles? Is the technology, is that number changed now? A little bit. We used to say four to 600 miles, um, but the materials then were firmer, uh, lasted a little bit longer. Now with this, you know, jump to, let's go with lightweight, lots of cushion, lots of, you know, um, different lightweight. materials, okay, lightweight. It's more 350 to 450. You Maybe know. 300. Yeah, a little bit over 400 and you're really pushing the, how long is she's gonna last anymore. What, one of the good things to do is, if you have one pair of shoes, from the beginning to the end of its lifespan, and your body is amazing at adapting to the wear and tear over time, you don't necessarily notice the wear and tear until it's kind of too late. It's not like you take a turkey out of the oven and the thermometer says you're done now. So if you went midway through the life cycle 
of your shoe and entered in another shoe and alternate them, it not only supports your foot differently, but works your foot differently, which is a good thing. And then when you go on your four mile or five mile walk or run in your new shoe, it feels like four or five miles. Then the next day you go on that same four or five mile walk in your old shoes and it feels like a 10 mile walk because you're not having the love back and you have a barometer, a measuring stick between the old and the new. And so if you're in doubt about the, how your shoe is, bring it on in. We'll look at the wear pattern. We'll watch your gait. We'll let you compare it with a new one. Yeah. Okay. What was there? Was maybe one more question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I uh, since I started running, my my shoes the size has changed a size and a half. Is that normal? Okay. The yeah, question. Well, it, it went, repeat it, the question. It isn't. Well, does can your foot change sizes after you've been running for a while? Um, yes. It's not that your foot grew. The toes didn't get long. The bones didn't get longer. It's the the re, the ligaments within all the joints relaxed a little bit more okay. to help absorb the shock. So it's not uncommon at all that about every ten years you're just naturally going to go up a half size. Um, mothers usually are going to jump a, a, a whole size after carrying a, a kid around for a while. So that that's pretty common too.